Is anybody home? Yes, exactly. That's the name of the pictures that we are going to talk about today. You ask me and I'm going to tell you all the story behind this picture in a new episode of Behind the Lens with Simone Amadouzzi. Is anybody home? Yes, that's the right name that I gave to this picture. Was it easy to take this picture? Not at all. And that's why I'm here to tell you how long did it take? That's the question that everybody asked me. How long did it take to get that picture? How did you manage to have the squirrel so close to you? All right, first of all, the, the, the place this is in Celebration, which is in Kissimmee, Florida, right behind Magic Kingdom for whoever is in the Orlando, Florida area. There is a very nice place called Celebration where they have a park, sidewalks where you can just relax and walk around. You see very fancy houses and this sidewalk is around a couple of lakes and I like sometimes to walk around that area because you are in a very peaceful uh, area and at the same time I like to think so I like to take a walk of course with my camera in my hand uh, and uh, there are a lot of squirrels as you can see and but also there are a lot of people riding their bike jogging walking their dogs so it's a kind of relaxing area and I've seen lately when I decided to take that picture that a lot of people were actually going there to see squirrels there were a lot of squirrels there gators as well, uh, a lot of birds. So one day I said, I do have an idea of what I want. I would like to get a close up of a squirrel. I don't own a macro lens anymore. So the only way to do it was again to think out of the box. All right, I get there. I bring my backpack with just three lenses. I know you don't need three lenses to take a picture of a squirrel, but my idea was very clear. I need the squirrel to get as close as possible. So I didn't bring a long lens because, you know, the, long, the longer lens you have, the further your subject will have to be if you want it on focus. This is the opposite. You need a wide angle, but not having a macro lens, the, the, the subject couldn't come that close as I wanted. So this is what I did. I went to Walmart. I actually purchased a pound of nuts. And I thought, if I try to make a new friend, feeding him, maybe he will trust me enough to come closer and closer. All right, I go on the sidewalk, I bring my nuts out, I put the bag in my pocket and piece by piece, I'm gonna put it on the rail, right? I'm gonna put it there and, and I'm ready. And I'm so ready. But as I mentioned before, that's a public area. So a lot of people are crossing by, riding the bike, jogging, and the squirrels are so fast. So it was literally impossible to take one single picture. Every time that I've seen the squirrel getting a little bit closer and I was getting ready, something will happen. Just a, a noise that will scare the animal away or dogs that they bark, they run, or just somebody that is talking to somebody else while they are jogging. 
nothing to do. And I put another piece of nut, and another nut, and another nut. Talking about about seven hours. Seven hours, at least seven hours in the same spot. And of course, different squirrels will come and grab the nuts and run away, but nothing to do picture-wise. Until one squirrel was actually more brave than the others. And, but so smart, it was coming, grabbing the nuts and run away, but then he was coming back five, 10 minutes later. He was the same squirrel at that point. So I thought, okay, I made a connection. Actually, there was no connection. He was just hungry or he thought, ooh, somebody is feeding me for free. So I don't even need to run tree by tree looking for food because this guy is actually giving me the food. Getting ready, uh, the lens that I started with was 24105. Uh, 24, 205, I'm ready, I'm ready, and click, 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 looking at the pictures to the screen, nothing to do, a lot of tails, a lot of butts, but no squirrel, because he wasn't stopping there to put it in his mouth or stopping there and eat it, he was grabbing the nuts and run away, but so quickly that I haven't been able in my first hundred clicks to have one squirrel face, all back, tails, uh, some blurry because, you know, you focus here where the nuts is, but he was grabbing it so fast that when you try to follow the squirrel, the picture was blurry. So what I tried to do was, let me, Hire the ISO. I'm sorry, let me hire the shutter speed. Of course, hiring the shutter speed, you needed to hire the ISO because the quicker your shutter will click, the less light will filter in through. Less light, it means that you need the light from something else. Now, can I low my aperture? Yes, I could low my aperture a little bit more, but the lower aperture you get, the more blurry you have your background. I wanted to make sure that from the head to the tail, eventually, if I will be able to take the picture, everything will be on focus. So the only other way to get more light was to hire the ISO. No problem, technology allowed us now to go higher and higher. Of course, you, you see some noise, but it depends on the camera. I knew I could do it. So I hide my ISO, I hide my shutter speed, and I'm ready now, you cannot be blurry anymore, my friend, because I'm gonna get you. Click, 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 nothing. And again, not just a lot of tails, a lot of butts, no faces. The problem was that some people will might stop waiting for me, hoping to get the picture, but in the meanwhile, they will listen to music, they were talking at the phone, they were talking to each other, dogs barks because they wanna play with the squirrel, squirrel is running away because he's scared. So it was just the right, the wrong spot, right time, because I thought I had a new friend, but the wrong spot but I didn't want to move because I had the lake in the back. It was a cool setup. <sighs> Nothing to do. Nothing to do. I tried and I tried. And as I said before, seven hours. Nothing to do. You know what? It's not going to happen. I thought I could do it. It's not going to happen. Maybe another day. Maybe I got to think even more out of the box, but nothing to do. So I still have some, some few nuts in my pocket and, uh, and I see that the moment that I give up, the moment that I give up and I sit on the floor, open my backpack to take the lens off uh, the camera and put everything in the backpack, that squirrel, it started to come closer and closer. He, he probably understood or smelt that my nuts 
the nuts were in my pocket. So it was coming closer and closer. And at some point is actually grabbing my sweater and not pulling or calling me, but try to reach, um, try to reach the pocket. And uh, at that moment, when I had my backpack open on the floor, I thought, okay, wait a minute. What if I change completely point of view? Let me change the lens. Let me put a fish eye. Now the fish eye, if you know it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you to check in my playlist. There is a playlist named, what does it take to get the right shot? And one of the video, it's all dedicated to the fisheye. Fisheye, it's a bulb lens, it's not a flat lens. Bulb lens, like a fisheye. What the fisheye will do, will give you a almost 180 degrees point of view, a little bit distort on the two sides because it's a bulb, not a flat lens, but that's the perfect lens. If it works, that's the perfect lens. So this is what I did. I grabbed my last couple of nuts and instead of putting on the rail and hoping to catch the moment, I put the nut on the bottom of the hood. If I, I could see it in my lens, it's so wide that you see everything. So I put the lens on a steady position and I put the nut right here. And I hoped that he could come closer and closer to grab the nut. So what happened, and you can see better, I'm going to put it up here so you can see better than the, the picture that I have in my hand. What happened was he came so close grabbing the nuts that he smashed his nose into the lens. Probably he could see his own reflection into the lens and that's why he came that close because they are a very curious animal. So he smashed the nose and you can see that the nose is actually touching the lens. And actually, if you see it closely, you can see myself in his eye. That's how close he came to grab that nut. So, because he smashed his nose into the lens, that gave me that millisecond, two milliseconds to click before he grabbed the lens and of course he ran away, a little bit scared of the noise of the camera and because he touched the lens, I've been able to get one one single picture of the front of the face of the squirrel. You can see the lake in the back. Actually, in the picture, you can see that the horizon is not straight because of the bulb lens. So the two sides are a little bit curved. But you can also see, as I said, myself in his eye, the nose a little bit squeezed because smashed into the lens and you can see every single hair. So that's actually the story behind this picture and I called it Is Anybody Home? because it seems like the curiosity of is there anything behind this glass? which was the lens. So, as I said in other videos, I believe that the name of the picture is almost as important as the picture itself. So it takes me forever to find what for me is the perfect name 
for the picture. Uh, sometimes I do have the name even before I'm taking the pictures because I know what I want to accomplish. You know when you're like, oh, I want to take that picture and I'm going to name it like that. But you never know until you actually get it if it will work or not. For this one, I knew what I wanted to do, but I never thought about a name overall because apparently after seven hours it wasn't working at all. It just wasn't happening. So it did happen. I thought out of the box, yes, changing the lens. I thought out of the box using a fisheye, a lens that you probably, as a photographer or an amateur photographer, you know that you want to have it, you want to have it in your equipment, in your backpack, in your carry-on, but if you count how many times you will use or you used that lens throughout your um, lifetime, probably it's less than 1%. But I'm glad I had it. I'm glad I knew how to use it. I'm glad that, of course, the squirrel trusted me. I'm glad it did work out because if I actually show you the 100 and plus more pictures, there is no one where you can see the face of the squirrel. So it, everything did work out. I'm glad that after seven hours, not so many people were jogging. I'm glad that there were no, at that exactly moment, nobody with the dog barking or nobody crossing by. Actually, I had at least 10 people behind me set on the floor on the walking bridge waiting for me to capture that picture because at some point it looked impossible to to happen so they were like cheering for me in a completely silent and uh, it did work out but I can tell you this after that day they put a gigantic sign all around the sidewalks all around the parks all around the lakes do not feed the squirrels so <laughs> it did work out uh, I, I used a trick which was giving nuts away, uh, it did work out, is anybody home? Now you know the secret, you know the story behind this picture and at this point I just gonna suggest you subscribe to my channel, there are different playlists, um, I'm answering all the questions in shooting answers which is one of the playlists, uh, what does it take to get the right shot, another playlist where I talk about the settings, I talk about the lenses, the camera, the tripod, the remote control, the triggers and anything that it's about what does it take to get the right shot, but if you want to know more story behind the lens, more story behind these pictures, subscribe to my channel, follow me through my journey. In the meanwhile, from me, Simone, and from my new friend, I wish you a wonderful night and thank you for following me.